Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I hope to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And how do I do that? I taste the wines in front of you. I give my evaluation and you decide whether you want to spend your money on that bottle of wine. We're going to do Pinot Noir today. And you know what? I always like to do Pinot Noir. And, and the cool thing about this, we're going to do one from uh, we're going to do one from the Côte de Bone or Burgundy, one from Patagonia, Argentina, and we're going to do one from the Russian River Valley in California. All totally different styles. If you ever want to bring the wine snob out in somebody, talk about Pinot Noir. I got a chance to meet uh, Randall Graham. We, you know, he did a tasting for me up here in the San Juan Islands, and we. Um, had a little dinner after the tasting, and you talk about somebody that love Randall Graham, love him to death, but he thinks that Pinot Noir can only be made in Burgundy. Absolutely nowhere else. Nobody can do it right. You have to do it in Burgundy. Well, he's entitled to his opinion. Absolutely. And probably what he means is nobody can replicate Pinot Noir from Burgundy. Well, that's probably true, but I disagree with him in the fact that I think that there's good Burgundy, good, good Pinot Noir from a lot of different regions. This depends on what you're looking for. If the only style of wine you like is from Burgundy, France, well chances are that's the only place you're going to be able to drink Pinot Noir. I, for my part, like all different styles of Pinot Noir. When I'm selling a Pinot, bar, Pinot Noir to somebody, they say, well I'd like to try a Pinot Noir. I say, well do you like a little baby fat on it? Or do you like it to be like Burgundy? More acidic, a little leaner, and of course they will tell me and then that helps me decide whether or not what kind of Pinot I'm going to sell them. Because guess what? It's okay to like a Pinot Noir with a little bit of richness to it. That's okay. It's okay. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter if you like a Pinot Noir with a little Syrah in it. That's okay. But if all you want is Burgundy, well, the chances are you're going to have to go to Burgundy. I agree with him. There isn't a lot of places that can replicate Burgundy style Pinot Noir. So, that being said, we're going to start off with Burgundy. Now, I had to go into my uh, cellar to pull this one out. It's available, but this vintage will not be available. And the cork was a little... I was going to bring the cork out and show you the cork. Hold on. So this is 2007. I had it stored properly, but the cork showed a little bit toward the top, but I smelled the neck. I'm hoping it's not corked. There you go. Can you see that? The juice kind of leaked up the side a little bit, so I'm hoping this one's okay. We'll find out. So I dug in my cellar to find one from Burgundy because I had one from... Um, Argentina and I had one from Cali, but I wanted to go three different areas of the world and you know I avoided Oregon. Oregon makes great Pinot Noir. By the way, if you want to get close to what can come out of Burgundy, go to Oregon. They do a pretty good job. This is the Joseph Druin, huge producer in Burgundy from Choy Le Bon, which is uh, in the, in the Côte de Bon or Côte d'Or, the bigger appellation with also has Nui St. George, all that. Anyway, 2007, Chore Le Bon, $27. And these are good values. These are considered an area in Burgundy to get great value wines uh, because a lot of Burgundies are expensive. I had the privilege, and I say privilege because not too many people get to taste a Domaine Rom Romney Conti. This was from the Latash Vineyard. A uh, friend of mine uh, allowed me to taste it, thought it was very, the aromatics on the wine were unbelievable, unbelievable. It was still too young, I think it was a 96, so it was really hard to tell how it was going to do. I, I just tasted it this, yeah, this last summer, and you know, it's a very, very expensive wine. It was on my bucket list to try, just for the fun of it, and you know, it, it was a beautiful wine, it really was. Not worth the money they're asking, but it, definitely a beautiful wine. Let's see what we get on the nose. 
So typical of burgundy is that sort of earthiness that you get on the nose. You know, there's a lot of like rocks and earth on the nose. Get a touch of cinnamon, which I always appreciate about wines from Burgundy, is you get that cinnamon. I got that on the Latosh big time, and I'm getting it on this one. The amazing thing that always amazes me about, and I know you can't see this, but I'm not going to worry about Well, maybe I can do this for you. Let's see if we can get a white, oh, there we go. A little bit of a white backdrop here. Let's zoom it in real quickly. Okay, so hopefully you can see this, but these babies are light. I mean, like, incredibly light. And it always amazes me the amount of flavor that comes off a, a burgundy this light. I mean, you can, it's, you can see through it. Get a, a touch of cherries. This one isn't really expressive on the nose at all. It could be a little bit closed right now. I don't know. It's a nose 7. A little bit of uh, leather. Not a lot. Not a lot on this nose. But like I said, that's an amazing thing about like old world wines. They'll close down, close up a little bit, and then they'll open back up and close and open. That cinnamon, that leather, that cherry comes through in, uh, in the back end. You can get it out of there. You have to really work at it, but it's there. Let's see what we get on the palate. This is exactly what you expect from burgundy. Very light, but flavorful. Good acidity, has a lot of earth, there's definitely some gravel there, there's definitely red flowers all day, the acid is solid, definitely needs food which you would expect from an old world wine. These guys build wines for food, believe it or not. That's what they do. This is fairly light. Like I said, the red flowers, big time, um, like um, rose petal and I don't know, there's, it just reminds me of red flowers and I'm terrible. I'm not much of a botanist, as you can tell. I need to work on that. I've said that in the past. It's light. It's easy to drink. You could serve this chilled for sure. Be a nice refreshing Pinot Noir from the Chardonnay Le Bon. I love saying that. Good balance. Maybe a little bit closed right now. I don't know. The leather comes through on the back end. Lots of red cherries. A little bit of strawberry coming through. The red flowers are prominent. The earthiness, the gravel is there on the back side. For those of you who really like burgundy style wines, you'd really like this. And it's a good value. 27 bucks is not a huge amount to pay for this style out of burgundy. And, you know, this would be beautiful with salmon, with ham. I Maybe a little bit of too acidic for Thanksgiving. Uh, but a lot of people love these kind of wines with the bird. And so, you know, but if you're having a, a ham um, at, at Thanksgiving, even lamb, this would be nice with that. I am going to go B minus on that wine. C plus B minus. I, yes, I'm going to stick with that. Now let's move on. I'm going to go B minus. I, I think it expresses the terroir really well. I think it has a lot of good qualities that a lot of you that are into Burgundies will like. I think the price is fairly reasonable for that region. Now let's move on. Now I've not, in recent memory, tasted a Pinot Noir from Patagonia. This is Alto Lemay 
Pinot Noir, Patagonia, uh, Argentina, 2013, and it says Hoven, which means new, young, and usually when it says Hoven, at least in, in the case of Rioja, means that there's no, not any wood treatment on it, and if there is, it's in large barriques. So this is obviously didn't spend a lot of time on wood, if at all. This is part of the Paul Hobbs project. In our last episode, we tasted some of the polenta that Paul Hobbs imports. He no doubt consults on this one. The icon from Napa Valley, who really appreciates Argentina for the wines they produce. Fifteen bucks. I'm really curious about this one. I should try and read the back label without putting you guys to too much. Alto Lemayhoven, carefully crafted in to highlight the freshness of our Pinot Noir enophiles, a new frontier in Argentina winemaking, or the cool, windy Patagonia steppe. The limestone soils of the upper Lemay River Valley, Lemay River Valley, so obviously named after the river, um, yield Pinot Noir with uh, vibrant aromatics and nuanced fruit expression unique to its exotic terroir. There you go. So it's new, it's young, it's fresh, it's from Patagonia, which is down in the southern part of Argentina. Let's see what we get on the nose. Mm. This one's corked. That's the second time this month I've ran across a corked wine. Barely, barely, I'd love to have some of you here to smell this wine. Pretty sure it's corked. I'm very sensitive to that. I'm going to give it a whirl. It's barely, barely corked. Hard to give you aromatics, but there's definitely dark cherries on this one. A little bit of toastiness, which is interesting because it shouldn't have too much wood on it. I was hoping the back label would tell me if there was any wood treatment. It didn't do that. I get some bark notes coming through. By the way, that was my email coming through on my computer. I forgot to mute it. Ah, you know, it's if it is corked, it's barely corked. I don't know if a lot of you would even notice it. Um, I'm going to still give this one a whirl. There's some interesting flavor profiles or aromatics on this wine. I get a little bit of that cinnamon quality, dark cherries, a little bit of bark and earth, not a huge amount. Let's see what we get on the palate, see if the corkness comes through there. Yeah, I can't. I can't review that. I mean, I think that's a potentially a really good wine, but when it's corked, ah, sorry about that, guys. I'm going to switch glasses. Wasn't hugely corked, but, you know, enough to, certainly for my palate. Ooh, look at that. Getting down to the bottom of the barrel here. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> this is more of a burgundy style glass, but I want to keep to the same glassware. Sorry, can't find the slot. There you go. All right, let's move on. Sonoma Cotrera 2012 Russian River Valley Pinot Noir. I'm very curious to try this one. Matthew Denhan, a shout out to MD there, um, told me this was fantastic. He thought it was fantastic. $37. And again, Pinot Noir usually demands a little bit more money than other varietals, except for Napa Cab, of course. Anyway. Sonoma Cotrera are very famous for their Chardonnay. They do a, like a zillion of them. They do a Sonoma Coast, Russian River Valley, they have all these different, the Cotrera, ton of them. And it used to be hard to get. Their Chardonnay used to have to kind of buy it ahead of time. It's not out there. Anymore. Times have changed. So, a little darker. I'm disappointed about that one. McKinnon. I need another sample of that. 
I'm sure he'll come through for me. I'm really dying to try that one. It, it, it even corked. I was. It was very. It impressed me. Ah, ah, California Pinot Noir. Definitely more fruit forward. This is definitely a darker Pinot. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can tell, yeah, but it's definitely dark. I'm gonna spare you the zooming in now. Dark cherries all day. I get a little bit of black licorice, a little bit of root beer. Definitely a deeper, richer nose, which you, like I said, this has California sunshine written all over it. And, you know, there's a lot of us that like that style of wine. I like it from time to time. I like Burgundy. I like Pinot Noir in general, no matter where it comes from, as long as it's well made. Let's see what we get on the palate. This is a 10 in the delicious category. It's got great um, dark cherry notes, a little bit of black licorice coming through on the mid palate, a little bit of that root beer, or some red flowers coming through on the palate. Good balance on this baby. And there's good acidity too, which I'm very impressed with. I like that. It's got a nice brightness to it. It's not totally drenched California Sunshine Pinot Noir, which again, nothing wrong with liking that. A little grip on the back end. So it's got some seriousness to it. This is kind of a serious Pinot Noir. Uh, they weren't just messing around with this baby. They wanted to make a good Pinot and they did a good job. I'm really impressed with this Pinot. I mean, $37. Uh, for what you get, this is a great Pinot Noir. I'm going to go A on that one. Definitely A on that one. I think it's a lot of you are going to like it. A lot of you wouldn't feel bad about having this with your turkey dinner. It's got a little bit more juice to it, so I think it would work a little bit better for those of you who do like to have Pinot Noir with Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, I understand that. That's not my wine of choice, although I've had, had it in the past. And I like to go to California for Pinot Noirs with Thanksgiving for the very reason they have a little bit more fruit, kind of matches up with the savory elements of the meal and the dry turkey. Now, I did have a very good turkey last year at my daughter's house. Robin smoked them. They were fantastic. And they were moist. So it is possible. But generally speaking, especially when you get into the white side of the meat, they tend to be a little bit dry. So California Pinot Noir works well. So there you go. Pinot Noir from three different parts of the world. And I really am very curious about the Alto La May. I will have it on another episode not court. Thanks for watching. Do you, what do you, by the way, what do you prefer for, with Thanksgiving? Do you like Pinot Noir? Do you like Gamay? Like a lot of people do the uh, Beaujolais Nouveau, which is released around the same time as Thanksgiving. Is that your preference? you like that lighter style red? Or do you prefer a, a, maybe a little juicier style wine, like a Zinfandel or a Syrah? What is your choice? What do you like with Thanksgiving? Because there's no right or wrong answer. Really, there isn't. It's what you like. Make a comment. Share with the viewers what it is. Please comment. Please. I like having comments. They, they just add something to the videos, and I will respond if you comment. Promise. I haven't seen it too many, so I haven't had time to practice that, and I want time to practice that. And by the way, subscribe. There's a subscribe button on this. Please subscribe to this channel so you know when my next episode comes out. And follow me on at Stan the Wine Man on Twitter because when I post these videos, they come up on Twitter and on Facebook. So if you can follow me on either one of those, I'd appreciate it. Um, again, thanks for watching. Cheers, and here's to keeping the snob out of wine.